Hi everyone. We're going to talk about 4C, which is savings plans and investings. Investing. Uh, we talked a little bit or quite a bit about this in 4B. In the difference of what we're going to do tonight is in 4B, it was all based on making a lump sum deposit into an account where for some reason you have $10,000 that you don't need and you throw it into an account or $500 or whatever. But that's not typically how people save. Um, they don't save up and then put it in the bank. They put it in the bank on a regular basis. So people will deposit smaller amount on a regular basis. There are some special types of savings plans. Of course, you can just get a plain old savings plan, um, but you can also do IRAs, 401ks, 403bs, 529, which is a college savings. And, um, you know, there's, there's all different kinds even within those. In an IRA, it can be a traditional or a Roth. Uh, 403b is the same as a 401k, except it is for educators. Um, you know, again, there's all kinds of, of different things. But what happens on those accounts is you just make a, a contribution, usually out of your paycheck, monthly. All right, so... Um, I will also tell you that financial planners will call any series of equal regular payments an annuity. That means payments go, that you make or payments that are made to you. So um, anyway, that's, that's the terminology that financial planners will use. Okay, so let's see how this works just by using an example. Mark decides to invest $250 a month, and this is important, it's at the end of the month into a retirement plan offered by his employer. The interest on the account is compounded monthly. Now, the contributions and the compounding are going to match. So if this is bi-weekly, it would be com uh, compounded bi-weekly. If it was semi-annually, it would be compounded semi-annually. Historically, the account has earned 6% APR, and Mark is interested in how much money he will have if he retires in 25 years. Okay, well, since we're going to be looking at this by the month, we can't really look at the APR in general if we're going to calculate this by hand. We need to look at what is the interest rate each month. Well, how would I do that? I would just take 6% divided by 12, which gives me 0.5%. So it would be 0.5% each month. Now we're going to be doing these as a decimal as always. So if I move this two places to the left, this is 0.005. Okay. So let's do a few months of this and see exactly how it works. We're not going to have to do this, of course. We're going to be able to use the formula. But, you know, how is this all coming about? Okay, so for month, month one, he is putting in money at the end of the month, so he starts with zero. Interest earned, if you multiply 0 0.005 times zero, you still get zero. And here he makes his first deposit of $250. So his ending balance is going to be $250. All right, so that's what for month one. He's got his $250 in there. So <clears throat> the ending balance in month one becomes the starting balance in month two. Okay. Now we are going to earn interest on that. Well, it's 0 0.005 times the starting balance. So this is 0 0.005 times $250 and we end up with $1.25. He still then makes his end of month deposit which is $250. So at the end of this month, of month two, he ends up with $501.25. Okay. Now it's just a lather, rinse, repeat situation. We take the ending balance here. It becomes the starting balance in our next month. So this is 
The interest earned is 0.05 times the starting balance. I'm sorry, 0 0.005, so 0 0.005 times 501.25, which gives us $2.51. Then he puts in another $250 at the end of the month and ends up with $753.76. Okay, I urge you to stop and try this on your own. The next time the ending balance here becomes the starting balance here. So this is 753.76. The interest is 0 .005 times 753.76, which gives us $3.77. We have to round to dollars and cents. He puts in his $250. So he has $1,007.53 in the bank. Okay. Okay. Well, of this $1,007.53, what were his contributions? Well, $250 every month. So this is 250 times 4, which gives us $1,000. How much of the balance came from the interest earned? There are a couple of ways you can do that. You can add up the interest, or you can just take the total minus the amount he contributed, and you get the interest is $7.53. Okay. Okay, so in seven minutes, we were able to do four months. But he wants to know how much will be in there if he retires in 25 years. Okay, well, we would have to do that once a month, every month for 25 years. So that would be 12 times 25. So we would have to do it 300 times. That's too many. And it takes too long. So we can do it a lot more reasonably if we use the savings plan formula. In the savings plan formula, your knowledge of your calculator is going to be absolutely essential in this. You are going to need to know what each of these mean and how to put that in your calculator. Okay, so we have A, PMT, APR, N, and Y. In either formula, those are our variables. So we need to know what each of them stand for. Okay, so I'm going to do this rather quickly. A is our accumu accumulated balance. Which is going to be your ending amount. Payment is going to be your regular payment or deposit amount. Notice we don't have a principal anymore because that was a lump sum. It is being replaced with our regular monthly payment. The APR is the annual percentage rate. Whoops. which is just your interest rate, converted, of course, to a decimal. Now, N, it represents, as I said before, it is the number of compounding periods, but that's the same as the number of payments. So it's the number of payments and compounding periods per year. And I worked too big, I ran out of room. And Y, of course, is the number of years.
Now I'm going to put in big red letters here because it is really important. You can see how complicated these formulas are. You need to know your calculator. And don't round until the end. Now for that, you can get them out of your textbook, but you can see right here, I've also put these on Blackboard for you. This gives you a step-by-step. -step. It tells you what to do if you have a parentheses, if you do not have parentheses. Okay, so make sure you're able to do that. Okay. All right. And if your calculator doesn't follow along with this, then uh, you can talk to me or Mary. Mary is much better at this that than I am, so you might want to talk to her. Notice there are also two versions of the formula. Just like when we were doing our compound interest formula, there was one that solved for the ending balance, and there was one that solved for the principal. The equivalent here is one that solves for the accumulated balance and one that solves for the payment. So you would use this one if you are going to, if you want to find the end ending balance. And then you would use this one if you want to find the regular payment. And if you look at the formulas, they are, they are very, very similar. Um, notice all this stuff is the same. This is upside down from this, and these two are flip-flopped. And if you have a background in algebra, it's not difficult to solve for one of those. Okay. All right, well, our next page, we are going to continue on with the example that we've done. Mark and his $250, 6% APR monthly in 25 years. Whoops, I'm sorry. And we're going to now use the formula to calculate these things. Okay, so it says fill in the formula with the correct values. Well, it's been so long since we've looked at the problem. What he wants us to do is find out how much money he will have in 25 years. So this is our A. So regardless of which formula I'm using, I need to have the A the payment, the APR, the N, and the Y. Now, it just said that we were looking for A, so that's going to be our question mark. There are five variables. In order to be solved for the one that's missing, I have to know the other four. Well, I'm just going to take those out of the problem. It says he's going to make $250 monthly payments. The APR is 6%, which becomes 0 0.06. It's monthly, so N is 12, and he wants to know what's going to happen in 25 years. Now I'm going to plug it into the formula, and then I'm going to show you what it will look like as you plug it into your um, calculator. Okay, so the formula itself, we know that A is equal to the payment times, open two parentheses, 1 plus the APR divided by N to the N times Y, and then minus 1, all divided by the APR divided by N. 
in your calculator, this is what it's going to look like. So in your calculator, you're going to have 250 times, open two parentheses, 1 plus 0 0.06 divided by 12 to the 12 times 25 minus 1, close parentheses, divided by 0 0.06 divided by 12. Okay, that looks really ugly, but the more you practice it, the more you get used to it. Okay, so if I do this and put it in my calculator, I end up that Mark has $173,248.49 in the account. And I put another reminder here that the calculator instructions are in Blackboard and do not round until the last step. Okay, so how much will Mark have in the, in the account if he waits 30 years to retire? Okay, well, once again, we're looking for A. Everything is going to be the same except the Y is going to be 30. So let's do the same thing. Let's plug it in like it would look in your calculator and then let's or plug it into the formula and then we'll look and see what it is in your calculator. Okay, so same formula. The only thing that's going to change from here to here is that this 25 is going to change to a 30. So A is 250 times 1 plus 0 0.06 over 12 to the 12 times 25 minus 1, all divided by 0 0.06 over 12. Oops, and I forgot to change it. In your calculator, that would be 250 times 1 plus 0 0.06 divided by 12 to the 12 times 30 minus 1 divided by 0 0.06 divided by 12. And your answer is $251,128.77. Okay, now it says, suppose Mark looks at this from a different perspective. He decides he wants to have 500000 in the account when he retires in 25. How much should he deposit each month to achieve his goal? Okay, so now he's got a goal in mind. And he wants to know, well, how do I get there? Instead of saying, this is what I can do every month and let the chips fall where they may, where they may let's see what the end is. I want to have a specific amount in the bank. What do I need to do to get there? Okay, well, since it's how much should he deposit each month, that means we're going to be solving for the payment. Okay, so I've still got my A, my PMT, my APR, the N, and the Y. The amount is now 500000 The payment is what we're looking for. Nothing else has changed. The APR is 0 0.06, N is 12, and we're back to 25 years. So now I'm going to use this formula. Because I want to find the regular payment. 
Okay, so once again, we're going to look at it, how it will look in your, just plugging it into the formula, and then what it looks like in your calculator. So, oops, it's not A is equal to anymore. It's P, the payment is equal to the A times the APR over 12 divided by 1 plus the APR over the N to the N times Y minus 1 and close your parentheses. So in your calculator, it's going to be 500,000 times 0 0.06 divided by 12, <clears throat> excuse me, divided by, open two parentheses, 1 plus 0 0.06 divided by 12 to the 12 times 25 minus 1. And you end up with the payment is $721.51. Okay, so now we're going to continue on with this problem. And what it asks is, using this monthly payment, how much money will Mark have deposited over 25 years? Okay, well that's going to be the monthly payment times the number of months in a year times the number of years. So in this situation is going to be 721.51 times 12, so that's how much in one year, and then he's doing that for 25 years, and that comes up to $216,000, $216,453 even. Okay. So how much of this is interest? Well, that would be the total A minus the deposits. Because there's $500,000 in the bank, but he only put in 216000 So that's going to be 500000 minus 216453 which is two hundred and eighty three thousand five hundred and forty seven dollars okay now let's think about what this means just for a second and what this means is that he turned his contribution of two hundred and sixteen thousand dollars into five hundred thousand dollars just by the power of compounding he earned more in interest than he actually contributed so once again, this is one of those life lessons of um, this. If this is where you started, you know, the young, the earlier you start, the better it is. Okay. Okay. All right. So let's go on to the next one. Mar oh. Mary is 30 years old, and she would like to retire at age 65 having accumulated a retirement fund from which she can draw $50,000 per year forever. She wants to know how much she will need to deposit each month in order to do this. Assume a constant APR of 4%. Okay, well, what does this mean? If she wants to be able to withdraw $50,000 per year forever, This means that she is um, withdrawing
only interest. Because if she pulls out anything more than interest, then it's going to reduce the amount of her earnings. Okay. So how much money will she need to have in her account at age 65 so that $50,000 is the yearly interest? Okay. Well, this is just goes back to what we did way earlier in the semester. It's just your basic percent equation. 4%, that's the interest rate, of what amount is $50,000? So this is 0 0.04 times x is $50,000. Now we to know to solve a percent equation to get the variable by itself, if it's multiplied by 0 0.04, we have to divide by 0 0.04. So x is 50,000 divided by 0 0.04, which means that Mary has to have $1,250,000 in the bank. Okay. If she has $1,250,000 in the bank and the bank is paying 4% interest, she can pull out $50,000 every year and she will still have $1,250,000 in the bank. Okay, using this value for A, what would be her monthly payment? So we want to know payment is equal to what? So we're going to use that formula, but we still, regardless of which formula, we need to have the A, the payment, the APR, the N, and the Y. Well, we know the A now. This becomes our A. The payment is what we're looking for. The APR is 4%, so that's 0 0.04. This is a monthly payment, so N is 12. And the year 65 minus 30 gives us 35 years. So she has, wants to know how much she's going to have to put in the bank every month for 35 years in order to achieve her goal. Okay, so the general formula of the payment is 1,250,000 times the APR over N divided by 1 plus the APR divided by N to the N times Y minus 1. In your calculator, that would be 1, 2, 5, 0, 0, 0, 0 times 0 0.04 divided by 12 divided by parentheses parentheses 1 plus 0 0.04 divided by 12 to the 12 times 35 minus 1. And you get that the payment amount is 1368.02. Okay, how much did she deposit in the account over the years? Okay, well, she made her monthly payment. Times the months in a year times the number of years. So this is 1368.02 times 12 times 35, which means her part of the $1.2 million, she put in 574,000 
$568.40. So let's find out how much of this is interest. So that's going to be the total, the A, minus Mary's deposits, which is $1,250,000, minus 574, 568.40, which means her earnings and interest were $675, $431. $675,431.60. Once again, the power of compounding. She turned her contribution of $574,000 into $1.25 million. Okay, overdue for time to switch videos, and then we'll do the rest of this.